Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayamba and welcome to our Africa Tour Conference Call for Sunday, December 13th. And this is for tours for Tanzania, Senegal, the Gambia and Ghana. And unfortunately uh, the tour that's not mentioned is South Africa since that's no longer on our website schedule uh, and it has been replaced with uh, Tanzania. And what I want to do is just uh, go over certain details to get everyone that's looking to travel with us to Ghana uh, for the next coming up tour which is uh, December 24th, literally 11 days. So for the, over the last uh, several months I've gone over the tenor, the tour overview, general terms, preparation, whether it's directly for Ghana or for the other countries, but the flow of everything that we do is the same for all countries. It's all preparation, get you ready, get you focused, get you to look at the fact that 100% uh, of your preparation details is on our website, Africa, for the Africans.org. And there's uh, photo galleries of all previous tours on Facebook, um, with the exception of um, Senegal and the Gambia, uh, since it's been a while since I've been there. But uh, you have uh, video galleries on YouTube, and you have this, all the other uh, details out there uh, just online as far as this, anything that you need to know to get yourself prepared. So I just want everyone to um, take accountability in making sure that they're clear on traveling with us to any of the tours that we're going on. Uh, the most important thing that uh, you need to know is the tour overview, what's included on the tour and what's not included. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where it's, it makes no sense to ask me um, about paying for dinner every night when, uh, when I said dinner is included and you don't have to pay for dinner. The only thing you have to pay for is your alcoholic beverages. But Unfortunately, these are the questions you get when you're on tour, and most of the time, I'm on tour just like you, to enjoy myself, so I'm not trying to be answering a bunch of questions that's irrelevant and questions and things that we need to take care of before we leave. So make sure that you're clear on the day-to-day -day itinerary from day one to the, to the last day. 100% of what you see on that itinerary is what we're going to magically do. The times may be off just a little bit because it's hard to just plan those things out and then things may happen to you have to adjust yourself. But what you see on that schedule is what we're going to go by. I'm working on the new tour book, which everybody will have a digital copy. That way when you're at the airport, you're trying to fill out information for the hotels and things like that, all those information will be on there. Just click on your phone and then just go to the WhatsApp group or if you download on your phone, you'll be able to open up the, the tour book and you go and you see all the information and all the contact details. So those are things that um, we have set that way. You can just have everything that you need, and it's not a situation where I'm on tour, I'm trying to move around, and now everyone is calling me about plane tickets and things like that. Uh, so I make sure I put the work in to get everything done, all of our reservations. I mean, literally everything to a T, and I just got back from Tanzania, so that told you that everything was already done ahead of time because you can't do these things at the last minute. So those are the preparation things that just want everyone to be uh, clear on. And the fact that uh, you look on the site, uh, we already everyone should have their visa already, so I'm not even worried about the visa. But there's a key topic on there that's called departure and reminder list. It's your preparation list completely. It's like 1 to 30. And what I'm going to be doing is just going through a few things on there on that list. Um, so in, things like vaccination, like based on the fact that there's nowhere it shows that it's mandatory and if you don't take it, they're not going to let you into the country. However, the COVID-19 test uh, that shows that um, it's been done within three days or, 20, uh, or 72 hours, now that's mandatory. So those are things that's on there. Any need to know as far as baggage weight and things like that uh, are, is on that list. Where we meet up at, same thing. Uh, bring a waterproof poncho, your travel iron, even though you can get an iron from the hotel, but you know, 50 people need an iron and they only have 20 iron, you know, you're just out of luck. So trying to get everyone to understand, get everything that you need together now. That way you don't have to say, hey, drop me off at the mall because, you know, we can always get you to the mall, which is right in the neighborhood of our, you know, the tour that we're going on, which is uh, Ghana, right in Accra, and same thing in Kumasi. And for the most part, wherever we are in whatever country, you're a very strategic location that way you can have what you need. But bringing everything that you need will save you a whole lot of stress and things like that. And for those who drink, if you want to have your nice exotic beverage, I would say just put in your check-in bags. Right. And what I'm doing is just uh, looking at the, uh, 
the newsletter that was sent out, and it's just uh, giving information about logging into the conference calls, and then just showing you the highlights of the other groups that we've done and other tours that we've done in the past. So what you see is you'll see a lot of group pitches. The goal is to see, try to take as many group pitches as possible. And when we're all taking group pitches, just want everybody just to get themselves sequenced and just focus on those who are taking the photos, and we can all share photos and things like that. And you know, we can also just share those on the uh, WhatsApp page so everybody get access to it. And the structure of this, the organized flow is, you know, just once you scroll down the, um, the newsletter, you'll see our links to all the previous conference calls. And literally, like, that's several years of conference calls. I'm one of the people that do conference calls on a regular basis to basically go over everything because I don't want no one to say we didn't go over this. We have everything on the website to a T. Uh, all of the previous, you know, like I mentioned, videos, like even if you're looking at you go to Ghana, you can see everything that we did last year. It's almost the same exact setup of what we did. Uh, so there's no, you know, no one has to just worry about, you know, what they're going to do and things like that. Um, restaurants and things like that always change, but literally just showing you what you know, people have never been able to show us is like a full drawn out experience in Africa, even the Tanzania tour. I'm up to 73 videos, and that's we're still in Arusha, and we have two other cities that we went to, Dar es Salaam and uh, the Zanzibar Island. Uh, but that's the level of what I like to share because over the years, you have people ask you, what are we going to do in Africa? And they, you, know, you have people who have ignorant conversation with you, like people that I know that they just love France, England, all the places. I tell them, you put your best white itinerary against my Tanzania and Ghana itinerary, and there's no comparison, especially if you're a black person, because everything on these itineraries is 100% relevant to you. And whatever they got there in France and England is just, you know, things that you've been brainwashed with. And, you know, plus you, you're around your own people and you're safe. And, you know, we have it to where it's just all about us. And then the, the best thing about these tours that I've set up, you're not surrounded by, by a bunch of white people the whole time you're there, you know. You may have one or two situations like in Zanzibar Island, you know, you may see a lot more white folks or in South Africa or in Cape Town, you know, that's what you see. But, you know, the goal is to give you, give you authentic black connections and experience and, you know, put you in a situation where you're around your own people. All right, and as I scroll down, um, the next set of things is the schedule that I have for next year. Uh, so next year I highlighted schedule Senegal and the Gambia. Roots Tour, April 2nd to the 12th. Uh, you have a uh, Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, May 24th to June 5th. And then we're back in Tanzania uh, for Tanzania Roots and Culture Tour, November 18th to the 29th, uh, 2021. So once you click on the, those links from the newsletter, you just, it just loads you to the website and then you have all of those details. Uh, so Senegal, Ghana, and Tanzania, they all require a visa and I have a full detailed layout of the visa process with all of the need to know and things that you need to put on the visa application. And it's one of those things where I'm open to, you know, getting with anyone who's ready to do the visa and help them. I've helped over 500 people with visas over the, you know, over the time frame for different countries, and you know, including people, obviously, that hasn't traveled with us and things like that. And it's, um, it's, it's a simple process as, as far as, like, business administration, you print out everything, you look over everything, and you just follow the flow of information, and then you write down questions like, all right, I'm confused about this, this doesn't make any sense, and then you can just reach out to me or just email me and say, Bomani, uh, these are my questions, and I'll just reply back and get you going. So I don't want anyone to get stuck on any situation, and the biggest situation I don't want anyone to get stuck on is this COVID-19 testing. So let me just repeat it uh, for the uh, record. We're leaving for Ghana December 24th. We get to Ghana December 25th. So wherever you go get your COVID-19 test from, your PCR test, your goal is to explain to them directly, like I'm leaving for Ghana December 24th, and I need to get the results back December 23rd or 22nd. When do I need to come in to take this test? And they're going to say the 19th or the 20th or the 21st. Uh, the location where we have in Atlanta, um, it's a one-hour uh, guaranteed test, and, and all of us went through that process. So it's, you know, the, the protocol is just a call and make direct contact and communicate. So I explained to them, I'm leaving for Tanzania November 20th. I need to come in on the 18th and get the results back on the 19th, and that's exactly what worked out. And some people, in some cases, they 
end up just doing getting their getting their test on the 17th and they got it back on the 19th or the 18th. All of those are good. So as long as it's no more than three days. So you get the gun on December 25th, your test has to show at least the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th. If it shows the 21st, KLM may not let you on a flight. And they may just oversee it because they're, they're busy trying to check you in and things like that. And they get to Ghana, they may also just not sweat it. Because when you get to Ghana, you're going to have to spend 150 U.S. dollars and you're going to have to take the COVID test there. On the preparation list, I put the link for all those details as far as the COVID-19 process, and that's under the vaccination information um, for yellow fever right there on the preparation list. So um, I don't want to pinpoint on that, but I posted a preparation list, a PDF in the group page for December 2020 Ghana tour. So you have that access, but literally once you click on the tour link, it's right there. Just go through the whole list. All the details you need are right there in, de in, in full view. So don't want to keep repeating the same information, but I'm letting everyone know that you're going to have to do your groundwork and get yourself prepared. We still have a good 11 days, so you have time to just get everything that you need together. And uh, back to what I was talked about, um, videos and photos. Uh, I have the link right there to YouTube and Facebook, and that's you know, that's from 2006 to now. There's a lot of documentation. So while we're traveling, the goal is to record our highlights. So if you literally don't want to be in pictures, don't want to be in videos, and you don't want to buy recording on that stuff, just be up front like immediately, because these videos are recorded and they, they go up, uh, and they're just basically highlights. Most of the highlights are just you know, the tour guides uh, talking and then you know, group members may be just in and out of some of the videos, but I'm not there just recording us as a group itself. It's more like the highlights and the information and documentation. All right, and as I scroll down this uh, newsletter, and you know, most of what you're going to see is the links, but the next thing that I want to talk about is the uh, airline tickets. Now, the airline tickets uh, are set up to where you have to log into Delta.com and KLM.com. Sometimes flights are split because it may, you may be a physical Delta Airlines uh, plane or a KLM plane, uh, but KLM is the, the KLM sequence is what get us to Ghana. Um, once we leave from Amsterdam, we just go directly to Ghana on KLM. Uh, so before that, the flight could be a KLM or a Delta flight. Uh, so you may have to log into both um, Based on you know, based on you not seeing all of your flight information, but as far as even the seats, um, if you have a Delta uh, SkyMile priority or a KLM SkyMile priority, log in with it and see if it gives you access to to you know to do complimentary um, uh, uh, early seats. If not, then you'd have to pay for early seat um, on KLM. Delta automatically allows you just to you know, select your seats. So those are the things where if you're stuck or you have any questions. Those are things I was hoping that you know, someone would just communicate with me ahead of time. But please do these things ahead of time and be clear on them because while I'm traveling, we're traveling and moving around, and all tickets are paid in full. And even though they're on a group booking, you still have access to call the airlines and get things changed. And if you can't, then you can always reach out to me for me to get them changed. Uh, so on the day of when you check in, uh, you'll be able to see, you know, get a seat if you didn't choose a seat. So. That's the difference on KLM Airlines. For those who have never traveled on KLM, it's a little bit different as far as those sequence. And, and um, everyone that's listening to me talk while I'm talking about all these things, make sure you jot questions down. So if you're not clear, I'll go through it in details. You know, when we do our Q and A um, shortly. And as I scroll down the list, you're traveling to Ghana with us. Um, the day when we do our city tour, uh, which is Monday, December 28th. That's when we're going to wear the Africa for the Africans t-shirts. Um, I'm trying to get these t-shirts finalized and sent to us. But uh, regardless of whichever t-shirts that we worked out, um, we're going to just wear the group t-shirts on that day. And for, they're not here to force anybody to do anything. So if you don't want to wear it, you don't want to wear it. We're not here to just stress anyone about those things. Uh, the group t-shirts are set to wear uh, energy of solidarity uh, during the uh, Pan-African uh, city tour where we're going to Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, you know, and also when we're doing, you know, we're doing the business and investment conference also, so you can wear the shirt and it's there to this show energy, especially since you're going to have a lot of people there at the business conference that's, that's that have repatriated from the diaspora, and then you're also going to meet Ghanaian nationals that's there to connect with us in our efforts of repatriation and investment and going through that whole process of living and doing business in Africa, all the need to know and just 
a whole lot of networking energy. The other day uh, that we have, uh, we have a red, black, green, and gold day. Uh, and this is um, one of the ancestor day that we have when we go to Ascend Mansell. So Ascend Mansell represents the last bat. The last bat is basically our ancestors taking their last bat before they were transported to the Holocaust dungeon, whether it's Cape Coast or Elmina. And then also on the day when we go to the African, the African Holocaust dungeons of uh, Cape Coast, we have a set to wear all white. So just trying to let everyone know, let's bring a set of white, whites and a set of red, black, green, and gold, the uh, colors of the uh, Ghana flag. And those are kind of the solidarity uh, things that we put together. And as I scroll down the list, our school supplies, we are going to one school slash orphanage in the mountains in Tutu, then we're going to go to one on the, the Pan-African community uh, land that we have uh, in uh, Jahadzi, which is close to Winneba. There's an orphanage there, so I have, I have suitcase and I have financial donations that I've collected to bring to the school. So anyone that's open, bring any school supplies or financial donations from the kind of yard. If you decide to bring none, that is literally fine. It's a volunteer situation. Um, and it's just like a lot of other things in itinerary. Uh, if you decide that you don't want to go out or participate, don't participate. We're not here to fuss with people to do certain things. We have to provide a full itinerary. And if you're up to it, just flow with the full itinerary. If you want to take time off or day off or you're, you're, you're swimming or you're just getting massages and things like that, absolutely fine. The main thing that you have to be ready for is whenever we leave from one location to the next, you have to be on the bus. You don't show and uh, not available. You can't do nothing about that. You'd have to be responsible to get into the next city on your own or, or working it out. Uh, so uh, all those things are clear in the book as far as the exact itinerary and schedule. So that way everybody know where they need to be at. And then we're all in communication on WhatsApp. So anything happening, you have issues, you communicate with the rest of us. And I'll talk about baggage and arrival um, preparation. The baggage situation is you're allowed two 50-pound bags but check in and then two carry on like a small little roll on and a backpack. Uh, the Agana tour itself does not have any domestic flights like uh, Tanzania and it doesn't, it's not set up to where we're going to leave the borders of Ghana. So if you have a single entry uh, visa, you're literally fine. But the only thing is know that once you have a single entry visa and you get to Ghana, it, you can't use that visa again. So multiple entry visa is what I hope everybody got, especially if they're looking to get back to Ghana in the next few years. All right, now let me move on to Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I have um, different group pages uh, for all the tours that we do. So even when you're traveling with us and you want to post whatever ridiculous amount of pictures or videos, you can do that in the WhatsApp group and also the uh, Facebook group. That way we just have you know, information to share. And when you scroll down the uh, newsletter, you'll just see a list of just all of the tours I've done. Last one, Tanzania tour in November 2020. And then takes you all the way down to Ghana tour December 2006. So... I've been taking groups professionally to Africa for 14 straight years, and uh, we've had about a total of um, 460 different people. Um, so some people have come back uh, multiple times, but you, 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 know, you don't add them into those equations. So that's 460 different individuals from the African diaspora, and uh, some from the African continent that lives in the diaspora. But th this is just to show everyone that this is the level of organization and cons consistency we have and things like that, like, you don't just, everything that I talk about is based on experience. So even when we're moving at nightlife and we're doing certain things and we're giving certain pointers, just, you know, just flow with the pointers. Um, I'm a person that set up game plan based on this, me being in the world of this technology business and logistics and just, you know, being in, in, the, in the U.S. Navy and seeing how, you know, seeing how the perfect logistics operation gets pulled off from this, um, you know, from different missions that are going out for six months or just, uh, just working on aircraft systems to get them out to do test runs and just a bunch of different things. But you, know, you literally just try to coordinate a schedule, coordinate information, and just go over the same process. So by the time we get to Ghana, I just want everyone to enjoy themselves and for everybody to respect the next set of people and for everyone to understand that uh, we're here, we all have our own different missions and things, and whatever goes on in the country, uh, let's be respectful to everybody else and keep it to ourselves and not be out there gossiping and talking about people's business. Uh, so really just want everyone to respect that situation because we've had issues over the, the past. I uh, have issues where ignorant people decide that they want to come to a breakfast table and gossip and talk about other people's business or be disrespectful to the owners of the hotel or even disrespectful to myself. 
once you do that, you literally will be asked to, to remove all your stuff from the room, and then we'll get you a private vehicle to take you somewhere else, and you can just enjoy the rest of the country on your own um, and away from the rest of the people because it's, it's literally a hardcore violation. You start those kind of problems. You're not there to gossip and talk about people's business. If you have any issue, I don't care what it is, you come to me directly. If you have an issue with the hotel, you come to me directly. I go get the owner and the manager and tell them, yo, this is the problem. And what we do, we talk about it, we fix the problem, we move forward. But gossips and things like that, that's how we have destroyed kingdoms and things like that and destroyed movements. And I won't accept any of those things. It's literally, it's, it's like an like act of war. And I take that literally serious. And I'm going to respect you and everyone else to the highest level. I'm not going to talk your business. I'm not going to insult you or disrespect you in front of people. If I have anything to say to you directly, I'm going to pull you to the side and talk with you and we'll work whatever out. We move forward. It's a group tour. You're going to have issues. You're going to have things that you may not like and things like that. Some people may not like some of the places we go, but this is a tour you paid for. So if you don't want to do that day or don't want to go do this, you can stay at the hotel or we can find something alternate for you to do. If you don't feel like we're doing a lot of shopping, all the shopping you want, com communicate with me and I'll get you a personal person to take you to all the shopping you want. Like I literally had someone sat on me at a breakfast table and lectured me for 30 minutes. And I listened to them because I'm always open to talking with us and getting our feedback back. But, you know, it was, it's, it's 30 minutes taken away from me being in the, in the ocean swimming and things like that. So let's be mindful in these things in this talk about these things a heads up and ahead of time. So, and those are things that we're going to go over again when we hit the country. I'm going to repeat myself over again that way, you know, because people don't join calls, some people don't listen to videos, some people don't want to read anything, but it's like, after a while, I'm going to like tell you like, yo, we were available, we went over everything, you're being disrespectful, and it's not fair to the rest of the people, and then you may feel insulted in front of all the folks, but I'm just like, hey, you know, we're on the bus together, can you just stop, stop certain things? Um, so it's one of those things where we're doing a group tour, and even though it's a pan-African black power group tour, somehow we have one or two individuals that may not necessarily need to be on this energy, but we're welcome because you're all brothers and sisters, but please just act accordingly. And I mean that because I have people there that are diplomats, people there are, that are coming on the bus with us that's not a part of our tours, and they're looking to build in our community. They want to get land. They want to do a bunch of things, and any little misbehavior or crazy stuff, you lose them. So... You know, that's not trying to beat a dead horse. Uh, and all these things are going to be written in the book, like, quote, unquote. And, you know, I even have one part of the book. Um, it's like a motivational, um, you know, list of motivational things. If you're feeling, like, down. You know, sometimes people have, may have mental, like, stress and things like that. You're on a plane. You have to wear a mask. You're packing all this bag. You're doing all this stuff. You're flying on the flight. You're getting on buses. You're going to hotels. It, it does have a little stress mentally on you. So I do understand people may feel a little tense, and that's when I have a whole staff of people ready there to help you. And you want to unwind, we go get you a drink or something, get you a party, or you know, I mean, get get you a massage or, or something. You know, all those things are available there in the country. Now, for the first and last uh, hotel, the pool is nice. I usually let them know to get, get the pool ready, so if people want to swim and relax and kick back a little bit. And, you know, the bar is right there. Music is there. I mean, this is like the perfect getaway for us to get away and enjoy ourselves. It is based on education and roots, culture, business, and investment, but it's also a good getaway. And it's, you know, it's the perfect time. It's Christmas. It's New Year's. We're going to have our incredible New Year's party at One Africa Resort where we're, we have all of the rooms on the resort. So, you know, and it's, you know it reminds me of us in Tanzania where we just we had the, the ridiculous beach party. So, you know, we have things that add this fun excitement also. Uh, so I just want everyone to honestly go with the flow. It's the most important thing. And then just understand that myself and the, the staff and people that we have, we put a lot of time and energy into creating, like, the perfect connection to you in Africa. Even when we do the land presentation and we do all the sequence of things that we have, you would never have seen, like, like literally coordination like this in the life unless you were, like, on, like, a military mission and things like that. Everything is organized to a T. Uh, so uh, I'm flexible from now until whenever, to, you know, for messages, or questions, if you want to talk, if you're not clear about something. And just want to let us know that we're all family. Let's enjoy our family energy together and look out for each other to make sure everyone gets back home to their family and everyone able to complete their mission. Uh, so that's what I have for the newsletter. I just went through it briefly. And I'll talk about the Facebook, the YouTube link, and things like that. So um, don't want to take too much of the time. What I want to do is 
uh, open up for questions, and then we can just go through everything that we need to go through. And any question you have, I'll answer it until the last person have a question, and then we close out. So let me just put us back in the, the uh, mute mode. That way you can press star six to unmute yourself. All right, so for those who have questions, just give your name, where you're calling from, and what tour you're traveling on, and your questions, and we'll go through it. Hello, oh, well, Monday. This is Jose along in Little Rock. Hey, good how many of us on? Hey, how you doing? Uh, the Ghana tour. How many of us are on it? I'm just curious. Oh yeah, uh, it is our uh, 20 of us for the uh, Ghana tour uh, coming up, including myself, Ooh. boy. Which is uh, that's small, a big number. It's a previous tour. Uh, right. I've been following uh, Mother America. I understand she's not going to be at Africa One when we arrive. Yeah, I'm a is she's in a whole different world now. She's like literally basically retired. So when that, she oh she is we won't see yeah we won't see her at One Africa uh, much anymore. She's gonna she's working on our project um, and business in Kigali, which you know respectfully. So she spent a, she spent like 30 straight years doing a lot for us in Ghana, and um, you know so yes, uh, unfortunately um, everyone is always looking forward to meeting her. Some honestly sorry. Well, you know. That was going to be one of the highlights of me going, and I really hate I'm not going to be able to meet her. <laughs> but it, it is what it is, I guess, right? <laughs> yes, and um, and um, now that Amicus is not there, I'm taking over the resort, and we're going to turn into a, we're going to have a, a, the most incredible New Year's party ever. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, one other question: I assume that if we're making financial contributions to the schools, we have to use local currency, right? Can't write a uh, check anyway. You know, I th we accept everything local currency and also um, U.S. currency. So when we, you're physically there at the location, all the money will be put in the pot, and the principal and the head of the um, the school or orphanage, they'll you know they'll just uh, collect it and count it up, and this you know they'll make their presentation and thank us. But okay. anything, all right. Yeah, you know, whether it's euros, anything you want to donate, it all it all adds up. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, excellent. Hi, Hannah. Hello, good night. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh go ahead. I, <laughs> follow up to that is, last uh, one. Um, it's, do you have a, I never. I'm trying to make sure I uh, know who I'm talking to. This, uh, introduce oh, yourself first, and then uh, go to the question. This is Shelly in Beaverton, and I had a follow-up question about the, um, I was not able to, make purchases of school supplies are you can you give us a suggested donation what would be acceptable because i don't want to overdo but i definitely don't want to underdo and make anyone feel unappreciated yeah about 10 20 us dollars um uh, it's fine anything less than that is also fine five or so on is fine it just all adds up even if it's a few you know small bills uh, okay. But for those who end up dropping like the U.S. bills are like five and ten, what I usually do is swap those out with either a bigger bill or local currency because uh, one dollar, five dollar, ten dollars is an issue to get, you know, change. Rich, yeah, in different uh, African countries. Okay, thank you. Should we ask all questions at one time or just ask one and let other people ask? No, I mean if you have multiple questions, go through it. I got we have you know go through it and um, that way we just. And so I, have, I have one or two more. Um, one is the $150 for the um, test in Ghana, for the PCR in Ghana. Uh, are you recommending that we pay that online, or are you recommending that we pay that at the airport? I'm recommending we pay that at the airport. I'm hoping that by the time I get there, they did not change the laws and rules of it, and we don't have to take that uh, test. That's what I was hoping. Okay. And then <laughs> part, part two of that, what is the customs process once we arrive in Ghana. Can we, or, or so I guess, can we lock our suitcases or should we not do that? Do they go through them before we get them? Or is Ghana, are we, or, or customs, are we standing there with them as they go through them? Um, how does that work? All right, perfect. Let me just answer those sequence. So um, before I get to that, uh, once we leave from the U.S., um, once you check your bags there at the airport, make sure you lock your bags and everything, and make sure that your bags all have the tags from from what your location to ACC, Accra, Ghana. Um, none of us are to be worried about collecting bags in Amsterdam, and I recommend everyone lock their bags physically. And even though the airlines give you a tag, I recommend everyone tag every single bag from their purse to their camera bag, camcorder bag, 
every single bag that you have because we're moving around a whole lot. And if anything get left behind, it's just easy for us to identify because we, in some hotels we may have other people with us. Uh, but beyond that, once we get to Ghana, uh, when we start going through, when, once we land in the country, what we're going to do, they have a setup to where you go through that whole process with a COVID test and um, the immigrations where you just show your visa and process through passport control. But once you finish passport control and you actually literally get your bags, once you get your bags and you're going through the final the final checkout point before you walk out the airport, you may get stopped and then that's when you'll say, hey, you may have to unlock your bags to be, for it to be checked. So it's, sometimes it's one of those random checks after that. Uh, okay. But outside of that, um, you're good to go. But the main thing is secure your bags and make sure all bags are tagged. Thank you. Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, you're welcome. Oh, and I also, just a real quick one for other people. I um, just finished also. It might be, I'm suggesting, um, just put a sticker tag inside of your bag with your contact in case the outside one comes off. You can always open it and say, no, that is my bag. That's my information in there. Hey, perfect. Perfect. That is a great uh, plan. So um, um, let me just process that and just be prepared. Good night. This is Monique. I'm going on the Ghana tour at the end of the month. I have a few questions also. Yeah, hey, uh, go ahead, Monique. Um, one of my questions is, for the adapter, um, do you know what country I should be buying an adapter for? Uh, UK. Um, UK, okay. Um, other question, I know that when we go to the dungeon, it says brings candles. Um, are these candles that I would light and leave? So could I bring like a glass of vaulted candle or? Yes, one. you can bring uh, uh, candles. You just uh, leave there and some of the candles, you, you're leaving it there and if you want to bring a picture or anything to this. It's just a special moment where you're just trying to give suggestions. And for those who don't want to bring candles, they don't have to bring candles. But it's literally to just leave in different dungeons as just a form of meditation and you know, spiritual energy. So, so that's, one, that's one place, or we, we'll be moving about, so I would bring more than one? Uh, we're going to uh, several dungeons, so you can bring up to four or five candles. Okay. You can just bring one or two. Okay. Um, I think that... Was I think I had another question, but I remember it right now. <laughs> you start. Turn it back in when the next person is finished. All right, Green family, the line is open for questions, um, especially if you're traveling on the Ghana December 2020 tour, and then for all the tours of 2021, it's all set and ready. Just looking for questions uh, from anyone. I do have another question. I see that it says I have to bring beach towels. Um, I usually bring my beach towel. Do I need to bring my own bathing towel for every night, or I should expect the hotel to have that? Yeah, the hotel is going to have um, you know, the towels and everything and all the things that you need in your room. The beach towel is if you just decide to just bring a beach towel out and just chill on one Africa beach, or if you just decide just to go out there by the pool. And then, you know, they'll provide you beach towels also for the pool. So it's not something that you have to bring. It's just uh, putting it on a list. Like, I, I still bring my personal beach towel also. And I did have another t a question about the COVID test. We have the rapid test, and then you have the one that normally takes like a couple, a day or so, or up to like two to three days. Are either tests acceptable? Uh, no, it's a PCR test. And what I have on the preparation list, uh, let me actually pull the preparation list up. It's a departure and reminder list uh, for the Ghana. So PCR is not the one that they consider the rapid test? Uh, what I'm doing is... Um, Click on departure reminder list for the Ghana tour December 2020 and then scrolling down to... This That's is what I'm looking on. All right, so right now, uh, number 28, it said, please have a negative COVID-19 test, PCR and or serology. Uh, so that's what the quote-unquote information I copied um, from the requirements. Uh, so it doesn't yeah, say... I guess, that. I, don't, I guess I'm not sure which, what the difference... I, all right, so I have to figure out what the name of the rapid is called because I know the rapid, I have a place here that will give me my rapid test back in 15 minutes, and then I have yeah, the one that just, goes to the lab. You just have to use the word PCR because it's saying right here, quote-unquote, PCR and or serology. That's the COVID test that they name. Um, I don't think they'll have any difference. They'll know any difference when you get to the airport and get to Ghana, but I'm just okay. going by that. So when we took ours to Tanzania, we all got a PCR test, and um, most of us, we use this 24-hour place. 
and got all the results back in 24 hours. Okay, I'll 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 look into it. I, I know that we have here we have pretty much the same. I just didn't know which specifically. I'll look into it then. Okay. I can tell you um, also that the the I've called around. I'm still trying to figure out the PCR testing because uh, in in Oregon it keeps like the bouncing ball that keeps changing, but a lot of the places, if you Google, it'll say PCR, but when you talk to them, they're, they are not doing the travel the PCR that we're looking for. They're doing the rapid. So sometimes it seems like they are interchanging the name. Okay. Cause I, oh, so, so PCR yeah. is not the rapid. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah, and PCR has to do okay. with the, the travel yeah, that you're taking. Okay, well, I know here in, in here in New York, there is there is the rapid and then there is the regular, and like you said, the regular I have to make sure that I'm going to a 48 hour regular place, because the regular is basically up to 72 hours, sometimes 24, sometimes 48. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have I'll look for that, but I know the rapid you just stand there, and they give it right back to you. Yeah, okay. yeah be careful the test you take, cause you know, if you if you do miss a flight because of these results and things like that. Uh, just have Delta Airlines rebook you and then just send us a text and we'll come pick you up at the airport the next day. <laughs> so I mean, I'll the best I can tell people if anybody missed the kind of connection, but the, the people I dealt with, I was like, yo, I need this test back in 24 hours. I was like, and, you know, we're, a bunch of us are coming up there. Can you do the job? I, listen, if I got to take the test at JFK, I'm, I'm in New York. They're going to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to work it out. Okay. Yeah, and then what you have to do is, is make sure that whoever give you the test, Tell them that they need to send you an email on it. Even if you go pick it up, tell, make sure that you just have it on your email or something because, you know, things happen. You're, you get your test results and you're on the way to the airport and it blows out the window. <laughs> that actually happened to my girlfriend who is in, in uh, Hawaii right now. The test okay, blew away when she got out of the, the car at the airport that she had it on her phone. That that's sucks funny. right there. <laughs> but, that's why it, but she had it on the phone, so. They, yeah. they, they always make sure we have it on the phone because, you know, they're tracking us, so they don't let you go nowhere. I'm in New I work for the state, so they track us. So I'm yeah, actually going to have to hide. We don't want to assume that we're going to get an email. You explain to them, like, yo, I need to get an email of this, uh, you know, and things like that. Just to make sure. I don't want anyone to assume that they're going to get an email because the place it, I went it, to – they had people coming up there getting their test, and they they didn't email it to people unless you like request an email. Just to give a good example, I mean, naturally you can always call that lab back and say, hey, because uh, they should have it on their records and, and things like that. But just you not know, trying to just get us all prepared and ready by just having everything just like tight. While we're on COVID-19, does anybody have any questions about COVID-19? Just want to make sure these questions are clear um, because. I do plan on doing a video call introductions of, for everyone that starts traveling with us to Ghana. That way we can get introductions out the way and we can kind of know who we're traveling with. That way when we meet up and see each other, we know who we, everyone is. So I um, just want to get all of those basic stuff out of the way so we can start introducing each other and start connecting. And uh, this video call will be uh, sometime next week. I'll figure out uh, Wednesday, Thursday, one of those days, uh, off days, and, the middle, and somewhere in the night, like 8 o'clock. Uh, work it out, and hopefully we can get everybody to be flexible once we start sending a message, say who's available and things like that, and we just work a time where everyone is available. You could probably talk to me Thursday night straight into, or, or Wednesday night straight into Thursday morning. I doubt that I will be asleep at all. I have a 9 o'clock flight Thursday morning. Yikes. Yeah, the, 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 video, call, the video call is a week before we travel. Oh, That's okay. It. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So just trying to do one of those. Just trying to do these things to where everything is done ahead of time. So when we get there, we just hit the ground running. Like as soon as we get there, we're starting our Christmas party. And not into Christmas, but we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna socialize. I got a question. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, name. Um, where are you calling from? Uh, Tori traveling on in your question. Hey, it's brother Wally. Calling from Chicago, I'm going on a uh, Ghana tour. Uh, what's what's the uh, policy in regards to bringing drones? Uh, I know some places you need a permit, others you might not. Are you are you familiar with that? Drones. Times any need a permit, Ghana you does you, you do not. Um, I've not seen anything online in reference to that, and I've talked to a few of my associates. Uh, nothing, but. 
Then again, a lot can change in a few days, uh, but uh, nothing that we have. I have a drone here, and I plan on bringing it uh, to Ghana so we can drone a few different things. Absolutely, brother. I'm the only one who does not know anything of what you guys are talking about. Yeah, what? Yeah, this time I can explain. Uh, drone of um, camcorder. A drone <laughs> camcorder to take pictures and videos with uh, a flying aircraft uh, that's, okay. uh, that's hovered by four propellers. Uh, which is considered a drone, and uh, you can take pictures and videos. But in some cases, more countries are outlawing it and requiring you to have permits because of a bunch of different sequence of things happening. People trying uh -huh. to blow, people trying to blow up presidents, and people trying to <laughs> use it to do uh, illegal, <laughs> uh, illegal surveillance of other people. People spying on. Yeah. People. I mean, it goes out there. So, and then people flying drones and drones getting crashed into like live aircraft 20,000 feet of it is all kind of madness so there's something that I, I do see getting outlawed soon to where countries will have strict and will be strict on it so yeah yeah that's, that's like I, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if you remember I think this was Trump's first year or second year uh, nine Saudi Arabian uh, oil wells got hit and they mm -hmm. wanted to blame uh, the people from Yemen I said, yep. are you crazy? These folks is holding up boats in a, in a canoe. And you talking about they got drone technology? Like, come on, stop it. Stop it. You know, you always want to blame us, you know? <laughs> yeah, drones are uh, flexible to where anyone can have a drone, even if you live in a hut somewhere or uh, whatever. You know, you have a drone and you can just use it for whatever. So, yes, um, one of those things nowadays, and but yeah, you're good for Ghana, and I promise everyone I'll make sure that I'm clear about it at least several days before we travel. So if anybody decides to do that, then uh, they can be clear that either you need a permit or you can't do that. But as of as of now, you're good to go. Just I would say to secure it in your carry-on bags and should be good to go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> My right, family line is open for any questions. I have a question about the investment conference. Sure. Um, is it if if we determine after the conference um, that we are interested in investing in investing, um, would we have the investment with us, or would that be something that would be done after the fact, or how did, how would that work? It would be done after the fact because um, what, what, what you're doing with presentation. You want anyone, everyone to check out and process presentation and they'll make quick decisions to give money or commit to anything. But for those who are interested, interested in the Black South Pan-African community, the link is right there on our website, africafanafricans.org. You can read through, you can request the application, all those things. Uh, it's just information that we have available. But I plan on doing a new flow of this presentation and also connect anyone else that's interested uh, with proper d data and updates. So we're trying to go through a process of making sure everything is in order. Uh, that way, when we get there, um, you know, we can have a full presentation uh, with the chiefs, the, the orphanage, the land, uh, having lunch on the beach, and just driving around the community and just you know, meeting people. And with the, um, gosh, it just slipped me, COVID moment. I'll be back. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, sure. Um, this is Hansel from uh, Arizona. Uh, you okay. just discussed the uh, health care questionnaire, questionnaire that you had fill out prior to the flight. My question was, is, uh, on the form, it asked for a seat number. If we haven't been given a seat number yet on that leg of the flight, what do we do? Now, I mean, if they're asking for a seat number, are you traveling with us? Because if you need a seat number, I mean, you have it on your ticket. Yes, yes I am, but I don't have a seat number on the leg from uh, Amsterdam to Ghana. We can't book yeah, those yet. Uh, uh, Hansel, yeah, Hansel. Uh, 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 thank you, Hansel. Uh, yes, uh, if you don't want to pay for priority seating, then you literally wait till you get there. And uh, once you get there um, to check in, you'll get a seat number, and then you can fill it out on any questionnaire that you need. Uh, other than that, okay. um, you can you can put that uh, seat is not available. Um, but yeah, you literally get one doing check in. Okay, and I just wanted to verify what I heard you say. You suggested we uh, pay for the uh, test in Ghana when we get there. Don't prepay it. Uh, yes, exactly. Pay for it when we get to Ghana. Just have your, you know, have your either your 
uh, 150 US in cash or have a card. Uh, so whichever way that they want it, you can at least pay for it. And last thing is for the people that was asking about the PCR test, I researched it. And my understanding is that the PCR test is the one that it takes sometimes two to three days to get back, not the rapid test. Mm -hmm. So it is one that's not rapid. Uh, yes, and then when you get to Ghana, what they're going to be doing is taking a rapid test, um, and which is uh, 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully it's no more than 30 minutes. So we will be a little delayed, but um, I'm hoping the best that we can just and get out the airport uh, no more than an hour and a half late, later. Okay, that was it. Hey, thank you. All right, absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. So, family, the line is open, and we have about another five, ten minutes. Hi, this is Kim, and I'm going on the Ghana trip. Uh, I just wanted to say that when I called um, um, the airline, not Delta, KLM, they said that the seats will become open three days before the flight. So if you check in three days before the flight, you may be able to get a, uh, a seat number. Thank you. I no, appreciate that, Kim. That will work right there. Um, and I apologize to everyone. Um, I have the SkyMob priority, so once I, select, once I log in, uh, it allows me to select uh, seats for every flight. So for those of us who don't have a SkyMob number, I would highly recommend this, uh, creating a SkyMob number and using it to log in with and that way in the future you'll be able to have one of these priorities where you'll be able to get simple basic perks there's nothing big but even be a, being able to select your seats and not waiting sometimes that's a nice little uh, perks but that's just something I can mention three days so uh, do check in around that time and see if uh, the system will allow you to select your seats complimentary in the blue eye in the, in the and the only thing that we can select that's uh, complimentary is the blue seats. Everything else is still going to be the same price because it's our uh, priority seating. And I must say, Bomani, you must be special because Delta wouldn't allow, nor KLM would allow me to use my Sky Mile points. I wanted to upgrade, but they said no. You have a silver medallion, um, um, but it depends on what level you are on. Um, that makes the difference, or maybe I just, because Delta booked some of the, the flights on their end, even though it's not their plane, and once they book it on their end, they they open everything to where you can select their seats. So it's uh, it just KLM just being greedy, wanting more money based on the fact that they create a system for priority seating, which for those who want to buy tickets at the last minute, last few few days, like last five days or so, they'll be able to select whatever seats they want. Well, Mani, I had a question also about uh, ticketing. Um, right. The first confirmation that I received from Delta had my name correctly spelled. It had my first, middle, and last name. Um, then when it came with the KLM, or you know, how the second time it came through, and I think I shared with you, they merged my first and last name and dropped a T out of my first and middle name. They merged. My last name, they dropped a T, so it does not match my passport. How do I fix that, or do I need to worry about that? No, you don't need to worry about that. What they, they put all of, uh, all of your names together, um, and when it doesn't fit, they start dropping letters. Okay. Okay. Don't have me in the airport and waving by, because I'll be so sad. <laughs> yeah, simple thing, you just... You just Call us and everything, but no, nah, everything is set. It's set in a group book, and and everything is, uh, you know, is arranged to where it works. The same sequence we do every time. Okay, I'm, I'm trusting you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, everything is nailed down to a science, it, mm -hmm. including our reservations is all booked and all set up, and our fancy tour bus. <laughs> um, question about Amsterdam. It looks like a four-hour layover there. Um, do you do anything special, or do you just hang out in the airport? Can it, you know? I mean, I know it's Christmas Day, so I doubt that there's much happening. We're doing group introductions and networking. So we just stay in the airport and kind of find our space. And yeah, we're gonna sit down with a. We know we're a flight department, and we talk and introduce each other and group networking. 
orientation and all those things because everything the goal is to do as much as much as possible before we get there that way when we get there we're all in sequence right so right there is a good time for us to connect talk um, and if I can bring this, the supplies with me as far as the t-shirts the tour book and uh, bags and things like that you know, I, I'll be giving them out but for the most part I don't think I'll be able to fit those things in the carry-on so We'll get them at the uh, Ghana airport once we um, get our get our bags. Just pass out everything in baggage claim, and everyone will get a bag, a T-shirt, uh, some pens, and a few other supplies. Anybody bringing cards for bid with spades? Ex exactly. Was, uh, perfect. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. So next thing is when we're in the One Africa Resort, especially due night in. New Year's party and when we're socializing at One Africa. Uh, we don't really go out much. Uh, for those who want to go out, we can probably just find somebody to take you out. But that's what we do, the cards, dominoes, and we have the, the bar open and we're playing music. Yeah. And then the same thing is uh, when we get to our Kumasi, uh, we start winding down, get ready to close down the tour. Some people may not want to go out. You know, they have a nice little lobby. Uh, we usually do our cards and dominoes also. So anything, any board games anyone want to bring, bring in, then we could just... And especially for people who don't plan on going out, but they just want to be out in, in the hotel and in the lobby area, that's perfect. All right, so perfect. So family, um, the line is open. When, uh, this is Kim again. When, when we get to Amsterdam, because I'm flying from California, I had planned on going into the lounge to take a shower. Um, <laughs> have a long layover. So, I, I Kim, I booked that lounge too. I'll be in there with you, Kim. I booked that lounge too. Hey, oh, uh, I enjoy it. Enjoy I looked. At, I thought it was closed. One is closed. The restaurant is closed. The restaurant is yeah, closed. Yeah, the big the, one is open. Yeah, you can still go in there, lay down, and just just get human. Right. I will be with you, ladies. <laughs> so okay. yeah, so enjoy your lounge, and once you finish, just join us, and we, it's all good. Don't leave us, Bumani. It's Monique. Don't uh, I mean, us. I'm not leaving you the plane. That, I mean, I, I can't hold a plane. <laughs> so, I might rest my eyes. But the thing is, uh, but what I mentioned, everyone, unfortunately, if someone get left behind, just rebook. Just go to the Delta <laughs> Desk. Go to KLM uh, Delta Desk, and they'll rebook you, and then just, just send a message to the group page, and we'll pick you up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. There's nothing I can do about that. I've, I mean, I've had a situation happen several times. And it is, and I tell them, I was like, no sweat. I was like, we have a sequence where they're not going to charge you for rebooking. Just, you know, they'll, they'll hook you up and you're good to go. And if we can't, if I, you know, then, you know, the hotel would just be given spe specific directions and where to meet you and pick you up if none of us are available to show up with, you, with them because we may be out touring. Yeah, I need. But my, but my, I'll speak. <laughs> but my name okay. is Jose Alonso again. Uh, okay. I got a question. You know, we're taking all these yellow fever vaccines and malaria pills and all this stuff. Really, how bad are the mosquitoes in the places we're going? Uh yes. Uh, depends on uh, people like to say. Well, I'm sweet. That's why I get bitten up a lot. But uh, <laughs> yes. Um, it it does. I was in Tanzania and I was trying to compare where it's worse with mosquitoes. And it's it's a situation where just recommend you bring cream spray and things like that and cover yourself and you should be fine. But yes, the mosquitoes are a little. I don't think they're any different from like in Georgia right here. I don't really be out like that. But when I do go out, I notice like if I go right now on my front porch or back porch. I'm I'm a victim to mosquitoes and all kind of other things. So I think it's the same as this. There in Ghana, we're going to be more on the in, in the outside element versus just us okay. being in our homes at times. So uh, just be prepared um, to you know make sure that you, especially at nighttime, make sure you have a long pants and make sure that you at least spray and cover yourself and things like that. And for ladies who want to wear dressing skirts, you find us. Make sure that you just don't put on a bunch of sweet stuff and make sure you have your spray or cream. But I don't think that it's that bad because, you know, you have other, some people say that they got bitten and other people say nothing bit them and things like that. Like, you know, so, but it is an issue for some people, honestly. Okay. All right, so and anyone that's not speaking, this, uh, you have to press star six to mute yourself back. So let me mute all these unmuted lines.
And family, the most important thing, uh, especially for those who are traveling with us, um, the group page is available for us to communicate and dialogue and and things like that so we can all be in sync. And beyond that, my goal is literally to finish this tour book and email, not email, but send it to everyone in the group page to where you have the full program of everything that we're doing in Ghana ahead of time. Um, so that's the um, final preparation right there. And it would have had everything in there that we would have talked about the last six months. That's a perfect time. We have about two, three more minutes, and then we're going to be closing. And if nothing else, anybody want to com conversate or communicate about anything um, on the WhatsApp, so text me or whatever. Um, but I, also want, I just want to make sure that everybody is clear, prepared, ready, and no one has any issues. And honestly, if something goes wrong and you have an issue with your flight or whatever because you showed up late at the airport, uh, just deal with the situation and trust me, family, you, you know, if you miss one day, it's better than missing a whole trip. So we just speak to the folks at the airlines and, and things like that. And, and then, then after that, just communicate with us. Uh, email and text message would be perfect. And we just go from there. But um, I think everybody's clear on the game plan. So follow the game plan and then we'll see each other all there in Amsterdam on December 25th. And for those who are traveling next year, just be prepared, and you can watch all of our highlights from what we have in Tanzania and also Ghana, and just get yourself prepared for next year traveling to Africa. And the main thing I'm showing everybody in all these recordings that I have um, that I'm cons consistently putting out is that while we're in a country, no one is wearing masks and things like that. So if you want to bring your mask and you want to wear your mask the whole time, that's up to you. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do, but uh, some of us are not going to be wearing our no masks, so it's one of those situations um, and there's no man basically there's no mandatory mask wearing once you leave the airport and other than that um, you know we just do basic protocols and things nothing fancy or nothing you know only thing I can reflect back is us in Tanzania and we, we you know as a matter of fact uh, the only time we, we remember about masks is when we got back to the airport because we just got so used to just not seeing it and not wearing it so uh, I don't know what's going on, but something is going on because they're fine in Tanzania, and Tanzania got a ridiculous amount of tourism from all over Europe and America, mainly white people. And especially that beach party was that you swear that if COVID was real, like half of the people in that beach party would have died because people were. <laughs> I can't even tell you anything. I just got to show you the videos. <laughs> but people were just having a good time. I mean. They saw all kind of this local folks, people from different countries, and they're just partying and, and jamming, drinking. You know, you go to the bar, a bunch of people there bumping each other, trying to get drinks, all kind of stuff. So I don't know it. I'm not an expert on disease and things like that, but um, I'm telling other people who didn't decide to travel with us that, you know, you know your decision is your decision, but obviously there is things going okay in these countries and we don't see people dying in Tanzania. People say that once they left, they caught COVID and they died or something like that. So anyway, our family, um, uh, since no one has have any questions, we're going to close out. Appreciate everyone and we will work to making this um, the best journey of a lifetime uh, to Ghana ever as we just get better with time. And, uh, and for those who are you know, out there in the other elements of the world, we're going to record as much as we can and share it with you. And any one of us traveling, feel free to share, post, and, you know, because we have to just let the world know that it's actually okay to move forward and not lock yourself in your basement and be running from COVID-19. So on that note, uh, everyone, good night. Appreciate everyone, and uh, we'll keep in touch, and I'll be on standby if anyone needs to talk with me directly or send me a message. <laughs>